Hello friends, welcome to a windy and wild episode 11. Sounds pretty bad here on Hearts of Iron 4. A complete beginner's tutorial slash walkthrough as we learn the entirety of the Hearts of Iron 4 game without any DLC enabled at all. By the end of this series, you will know how to play the game. You'll know all the aspects of it as well as being in a position with half the world or thereabouts under your control. So without any further ado, let's get back on into it. If this is the first episode you're seeing, do check the description. It's kind of important you start from episode one, unless yeah, you're just here to sort of learn little bits and bobs without necessarily in taking part in the playthrough. Okay, so as always I like to do, we'll slow down time just a little bit before we unpause. And... Here, let's have a look. No template. We've got the Toad Anti-Air. This is a good time, actually, to square away this. So let's start here. So last episode, we looked at modifying one of the divisions. We modified the Panzer Division, and we gave him a support company. When it came to... Um, what's it called? The Initiative One. <laughs> Dave escapes me now. Uh, down here on the left-hand side. The Signal Company. There we go. So what we're going to do now is do a similar thing, but with the trucks company. So if we come over to recruit and deploy, we've got the motorized infantry here. If we press edit, this is the template as it stands. Now, if we take a look on support side, what I don't want to do is give the same support company over again. What I do want to do is consider giving them anti-air. Now take a look at the uh, combat stats here and what happens once we offer them the anti-air support company. So just have a look. See all of these green stats that have just appeared. So we're going to ignore hit points for now as well as one of the two of these on the left hand side that are in red. Again, most of these are almost uh, irrelevant to us with the exception of organisation. Minus 3.7 it when you've only got 44 or 47, whatever it was to begin with, is quite a hit. Uh, it's not quite 10%, but it's it's nearly. Take a look at soft attack, plus 1.8. So that's a small increase, but it's an increase. Hard attack, though, is up by 4.2. We're only at 15.5 now, so with that additional 4.2, we came from about 11. So that is a big increase. Take a look at air attack. Obviously, we had no ability to shoot at aircraft before. That's now uh, responsible for the, for the entire 15.2 points. And so what air attack does in this game when you're talking ground vehicles is they don't shoot at any aircraft that they can see. They shoot at aircraft that are specifically either engaging them or at risk of engaging them. In other words, combat air, enemy aircraft that are combat air support Sometimes your army will be operating in areas where it's difficult to get enough air cover to them that, that you would like, or maybe you're just running short on aircraft. So to have sprinkled in your army's people who are capable of shooting at these aircraft that are attacking them is hugely important. Small increase for defence. We've gone, we're up to 260 for defence. It's only a two point increase, so we're talking a percentage point there. Breakthrough is a small increase as well, but nonetheless is an increase. So all green there is good. Big increase for piercing. Uh, we've gone up to 13.4, which is an increase of almost 9. That's more than doubled it. Uh, piercing is um, how effective the unit is at breaking through the the lines, basically. Um, as And it's got... Uh, is heavily intertwined with panzers that, of course, that's their strong point as well. So having an anti-air gun, you may think, well, why does that help with piercing? Because the German anti-air guns were dual purpose. They could be lowered and pointed directly at enemy tanks and so forth um, as well. So this is a super useful uh, weapon and we'll absolutely make use of that. Now, once again, when we hover over the save button... We can see what it's going to cost, an additional 300 manpower and 20 anti-air, uh, or 20 towed anti-air. And again, we've got over 400 available, so that's a good thing. Okay, so we'll press save. 
Another thing I want to do, if we take a little look on the logistics page next to trucks, we've got 2,200 trucks available. The motorized divisions are very useful. Yes, they're going to cost fuel and all the rest of it, so we want to be careful that we don't use too many. We also require trucks when it comes to field hospitals. We will certainly re be requiring trucks when it comes to things like supply. So we don't want to basically redline the recruitment, and by that I mean bring it all the way down to as, as near as zero as possible. We certainly want to have a, a, a large surplus um, but for now, I think we can afford to recruit a few more. So we're going to come over to the recruit menu. We're going to come next to the motorized uh, truck divisions here. We're just going to press the train button once. We're going to assign a location where these guys are going to train. So again, somewhere near the capital. Uh, let's go up here uh, to the state immediately north of Brandenburg. Perhaps this one here. I think it's got Mecklenburg. There we go. And that's now set. Now, in terms of how many do we want to recruit, and again, the default is over and over again, we just want to recruit it the one time. So press the plus just to the right. In terms of priority, um, uh, yeah, we'll leave it at medium again because our infantry is already set to the lowest priority there. In terms of equipment, right, if there's not enough to go around, the trucks are going to get it first. Now, how many divisions do we wish to recruit? And again, the default is only ever the one. If I just uh, hide myself just temporarily, that's this one here. Now, you can see equipment-wise, they've only got 99%. And if you look, it's all green apart from artillery. So we are short on artillery. We'll have to see if we, we can increase the artillery production. But in terms of the things that matter, I mean, artillery matters too, but trucks and so on, you can see we're using 335 trucks if you look about halfway down that list. But remember, we had about 2,000 spare, uh, so we would be able to recruit about six or seven motorized divisions and use all of those spare trucks. But remember what I was saying, we don't want to redline it. So what I'm going to do is re recruit three or four. So I'm going to come over to the add unit button here, and we'll just go one two three there we go so the additional one plus three more makes four and that's it and again we're just doing this one time so once these four divisions are out that's it the only other side we'll look at recruiting more motorized divisions is uh, however many months or years in the future again when we've got a big surplus of trucks if we start running out of trucks and we see that red number going higher and higher and higher we may have to disband some of our divisions again just to make sure that things elsewhere are, are supplied as, as we want. So let's leave that there. Let's press escape. If we come over to our production menu and remember we're somewhat short on artillery. Well, it would be great to increase the number of factories we have working on artillery. But as you can see here, we're short on tungsten by one unit. You can see here that artillery requires tungsten. So if we put a fourth factory producing artillery, we're not really going to end up with much more because, again, the problem is we're short on tungsten. If we had tungsten to spare, absolutely would we increase the amount of that we're working on artillery. So I may be tempted to set up a trade deal with a country that has a lot of tungsten. Again, just for one piece of tungsten, it's not worth it. But if we could get more than one piece of tungsten use then may be so let's have a look under our construction menu currently we're still trying to finish off a couple of civilian factories there you can see the road networks we're working on what i want to do if i come over to my military factory let's make it worthwhile to start producing more artillery and soon so what i'm going to do is next to these states that are already at a hundred percent uh, let's start with Brandenburg. I'm just going to put one military factory down. I'm going to put one down in Saxon. I'm going to put one down in Hanover. There we go. So we've got three military factories there. Let's also go ahead and put one down in Moorsland. Now, by default, everything that you add comes to the bottom of this list here. Um, what I'm going to do is take the state there this one where we're trying to upgrade the road networks and i'm just going to drag them to the bottom of the list and i'm going to do the same with this one drag it to the bottom of the list and so now what's happening is 
any f civilian factories that were previously working on trying to upgrade this road network, actually the priority is now to get the military factories uh, produced. And because there's only one military factory that they need to build per state, and it's on a state that's got a 100% road network, these are going to build as quick as is possible. Once they're built, we want them working on the artillery. So we'll come over to the production menu. So I'm going to say one, two, three, four. There we go. And once that has taken place, we will look at performing a trade deal with Sweden so we can make use of that tungsten, the artillery, and by extension, fulfill our shortages as soon as possible because this is holding us back now. So let's press escape. Let's unpause. Pick up the pace. Just press F2. We'll have a look how the flotilla is doing there. He's got five subs. Let's click the service fleet. Um, take a look at the destroyers. Here we were working for three. So far he's got two. As soon as that next destroyer rolls out, we'll start his training as well. Okay, let's pause. We've got unassigned division here. Uh, it's just the one. Um, so we will assign General Max here. That was this much older looking guy with the grey hair. He was responsible for holding the line up here. You can actually see we've got some of the enemy divisions over there training as well. You can see the star jumps is uh, indicative of these guys training. Uh, so let's assign by right clicking, unpause, press escape. Just going to hover over, modify it. Okay, so theorist, remember we want the the theorist that's going to cost us 200 political power. I said that an episode, perhaps two or three episodes back now. Okay, research finished. This is the PAC-36, the anti-tank weapon. Okay come back to research come over to engineering and because everything's ahead of time now we said it would be most beneficial to go for this one so let's get that one underway research and unpause this one's going to be completed very soon let's pause there all right news Amelia Earhart, by God, sometimes you have a bit of chewing gum and it, once in a while it takes your breath away. It's kind of what's happened. Amelia Earhart disappears. Okay. When these news articles come up, sometimes they, they're just like a, this is what happened back then. Okay. So it's just like a news article of just so you sort of have a vague idea of where you are. Other times... The news articles will be directly involved with what you or what another nation is doing. Um, so, something like this you may choose to read, but basically it's um, it's fluff. It's padding for the game. So, uh, you know, Amelia Earhart disappears. Uh, the famous aviator, you know, a loss of for aviation, right? Okay. And certainly back then, uh, Women Pilots was obviously a, a much more of a... Uh, novelty is the wrong word, but, um, you know, ev everything was pretty much male-dominated back then, right? Aviation especially. So, yeah, lost for aviation. Okay, unpause. I guess the point I'm trying to make is it has no influence on the game, so if you want to choose to read it or not, it makes no difference. Just those news articles. Okay, so we hear that noise. We've got the modified government decision. And again, play until you get that. We've ticked over 150 political power. So let's select the icon and see what we can do. So we, oh, let's have a look. Uh, theorist, we need 200 for that. Political advisor. Okay, we're starting to produce our military factories now. We've got four of them on the way. So now might be a good time to get our war industrialist guy hired because you can see that's going to increase the speed at which stuff like this happens by 10%. So let's get him on the go. And that's an instantaneous uh, increase. Let's carry on.
All right, pause once again, our next piece of research. Okay, so let's come over to the research. I'm gonna start doing these things a little bit quicker now because I hope you're with me. And again, all of these things are gonna be somewhat ahead of time now, so we're going to get clobbered. I'm not going to go for maintenance or logistics. I'm gonna live true to the sort of style that I play. Okay, if you're building very unreliable tanks, uh, maintenance company is obviously a good thing to have. Uh, logistics, if you're building very large divisions and you're far away from home, is a good thing to have. I'm not saying these are worthless, I'm just saying they just don't fit in with my style of play. Armour, he's way ahead of time, so I'm not going to look at this because it's like one and a half years. Artillery, so I'm looking for something that's basically half a year or thereabouts. Uh, the aircraft, they're two and a half years, so that's even worse. Um, let's go for the radar here, 1938, so we'll go for that one. Okay, unpause. And I'm going to go for the red line now. Pause. Okay, Japan declared war on, and I believe that says Shanghai or Shanghai. You know, apologies for getting that wrong. So, again, 937, Japan also declared war on China. So they've declared war on both of them at the same time, probably because they're allies. And so if we were to come over here now, this little part uh, of Japan or this little part of the world that Japan is currently uh, inhabiting, They've now started on and they'll be looking to push this way into China. Also over here we've got uh, Indochina which is currently under French rule. Um, you know, Japan will be looking to take that as well. And, and then later on obviously that after post-war that went back to being under French rule. Uh, until the Vietnamese tried to take it back and that eventually led to uh, the whole Vietnam War thing. But for now, just enough to know that uh, Japan is starting. And again, we're July 37. Okay, quick check on things in Spain. Uh, you can see two of the three divisions have basically gotten everything that they need. Our third division, or, or let's just say the division here in the middle, at least in my case, you can see is very short still on equipment and everything else. It's, I don't think this division has recovered very well. Let's press escape, take a look on logistics. We're still short on light tanks, but at least on my game, I'm now below a uh, 100. I'm 97 tanks short. Uh, that's something else I was hoping to increase production uh, by which uh, shouldn't take much longer. We also need to increase steel production and it's soon getting to the point where rather than looking to increase steel production, we'll be looking to scale back on that free trade deal. Okay, let's close everything down. Let's get rid of the red line. Let's unpause. F2. Shanghai joins China, okay. All right, let's pause because there's too many things. The whole Marco Polo incident. So once again, this is over there. Uh, Japan and China. Interesting times indeed. Uh, Shanghai or Shanghai joined China. Okay, I thought they were already were together, but uh, if they weren't before, they are now. We've got unassigned divisions, uh, just the ones, so we'll get that squared away before we unpause. Once it, and again, this is why I don't always like operating in multi theaters. I can't just instantly click an army for this division to go to. Got to press escape, come over to the German theater, and now send these uh, to a division. I uh, may give them also to General Max so that he's got the four divisions. Okay. U.S. Congress passes Neutrality Act, and again, you can read that. Okay, now more and more notifications, so again, we're going to press pause just to deal with them. So this is just world news, again, that has no direct impact on us, at least not for now. So we're just going to okay those. All right, unpause. Let's just press OK and OK and OK, OK, without pausing, because again, they didn't directly impact us. If you want to read them, by all means do, just make sure you pause uh, so that the rest of the game doesn't go crazy on you. 
Game press F2, just a quick look how these are going. Okay, so I'm going to pause real quick here as we get on the very back end of July 37. You can see my fourth flotilla here with the uh, submarine guy. So remember F2 to get to your navy, select him. We've got our fourth flotilla down here, which can we can press select here or we can click here. We've been over this, but you know, no, I don't need to keep repeating it from here on. Naval exercises so we can get these up to the uh, silver star or experience level three. Okay, there are a couple of more subs that are needed to fulfill the flotilla. That's not going to take long. Okay, let's unpause. Press escape. Let's come over to the air menu, F3. I'm just going to pause real quick. We're already in August 37. Select the airbase. Look at this. The two air wings that we were training are up to Silver Star. Nothing to be gained by keeping them training. So I'm going to select them both using shift. Tell them to stop training. I'm going to fly them to a suitable airbase. And again, close to the Polish border is, is fairly suitable there. So we'll right click. We'll press escape so we don't uh, issue any more orders accidentally. I'm going to select the airbase once more. We've got this uh, squadron of fighters here, a hundred of them ready to train. So we'll start those training. We've got this flashing air wing button. So we're going to select that and see what's ready. We're almost ready for close air support. You see there are 98. We need another two. Now you could just deploy it and have it over and done with. The problem is we've got, we're using these particular aircraft in Spain and as and when they get shot down, we want to really make sure that Spain, um, you know, keeps a hundred percent operational. So what I'm going to do is wait until this is like 105 or thereabouts. Same with the interwar fighters. And at that point we'll start recruiting more. Okay. Right. Let's unpause. And we'll come over to the F1 menu, the or the main view, F1 menu. The army view, which is also, again, the default view. Command power is building up quite nicely. So let's see what Heinz Guderian, this blue cross, has been flashing at us all game. Let's see what he can do. And he's got the Panzer Expert option already available. That's because he was already messing around with these let's pause because we've just gotten notification while we were looking at this so panzer expert 10 percent um armor stuff increased um increased armor rights uh increased chance of blitz all of that good stuff it's going to cost us 15 command power to assign we've got 39 so we've got plenty we're actually able to assign two traits to Heinz Guderian. Um, and again, for reasons we've said before, we're not really interested in the guerrilla fighter stuff. So let's assign the Panzer. Okay. Let's press escape. One thing to note, look at the Panzer division. It is the basic one. It's the, uh, it, you know, it's the leave. So what we're going to do is set Heinz training to get this up to Silver Star level. So let's just click on his training. And fuel wise, you can see, OK, we're less than half now. We're down to like 1.7 years. Just before we unpause, the very important one, free civilian factories. So we've built the um, or most of the things that we'd asked of it. Uh, we see we've still got three construction lines uh, being worked on. If you recall that when we set the artillery, we were expecting to be short. And here you can see we really are now short on tungsten. So what I'm going to do is select the tungsten. And for now, let's start a trade going. Now, who are we going to trade with is an important decision. Bearing in mind, at some point or other, it's possible that we're going to align up with Japan. So we don't really want to trade with an enemy both of somebody who's going to be our enemy as well as somebody who's going to be an enemy of Japan. Now, some countries such as America were joint enemies, but other countries, say the Soviet Union, Japan was never the enemy of the Soviet Union. Why and how? Uh, you know, again, <laughs> some it perhaps you may wish to look at. Soviet Union was only the enemy of Germany in insofar as the war goes. Um, and the allies, uh, which would include things like Italy, Romania, and, their, and so on. 
So a country like Portugal, which remains neutral, that would be a great country to trade with. Clearly, we are, we are able to trade with China if we wish. But again, that's only going to assist China, who is at war with uh, Japan. Now, if for some reason we were trying to knock uh, Japan out without even trying to, without firing a shot, as it were, absolutely start trading with China. I mean, literally, again, if we trade with China, China gets the use of those uh, civilian factories and by extension is able to build more stuff that it requires at home. Uh, but for now, let's trade with Portugal. Sweden's a pretty good choice as well because they're a fairly weak country, at least in this period of time. And personally, as a country that I think as Germany, you want to be taking over because they've just got so much tungsten there. It would be rude not to. So let's go ahead, start the trade with Portugal. As you can see there, we're going to lose the use of a civilian factory. We're going to gain eight pieces of tungsten. So we're four short. We'll press OK. As soon as we unpause, we're going to get an additional four. And again, those four pieces go to waste. So it would make sense to try and make more factories to make use of that tungsten. We're also very much short on steel here. And I may actually, I don't know. Do you know what? Just as a very short term measure, let's go ahead and do that. Now, we could actually trade with Japan because... You know, that would help Japan out. So let's set one factory or use of trading with Japan. Now take a look at this. Because Japan's obviously far away and is, you know, we've got no land connection between us and Japan. It's going to use 12 convoys to perform this trade, which is okay. And you, now you can see this dotted line. This is something I was wanting to show before. Uh, so here you can see where that trade route is taking place all the way over here now the further something is away the more convoys you're going to use for the trade you can see there to trade with the uk would only take two convoys that's the only rhyme or reason behind convoys the more stuff you're trading over the longer distance the more convoys it uses and again that will trade apparently with this port here which will eventually link up to the japanese capital by rail Okay, is this the most efficient way to play? Probably not, but I'm just showing you what happens. Now, once we unpause, take a look at that. That deficit is much improved. Now, as soon as we change the laws, as soon as we change those trade laws and get enough steel of our own, we will be cancelling these deals the minute that we do that. We don't want to waste any of this for a second more than we have to. Okay, I almost unpaused then. Well, I did for a split second, but uh, just before we let it go, Three civilian factories, let's make use of these. So I'm going to put down my first synthetic refinery. And let's put one down in Saxon. So we'll fill that state to the full 14 slots just with that one. Then we'll put down a stack, a full stack of civilian factories. So I'm going to do this state here, Turing. And so far we've got one factory out of potentially 11. So I'm going to hold shift. Now that this state has got 100% infrastructure and click. Then the next queue that I'm going to look at, let's say Franken, I'm going to stack up military factories. So I'm going to select the military factories, shift and click. There we go. All right, let's let, let's let go or unpause. And we'll see if we can save up for our... Okay, let's pause national focus. Um, I'm wanting to save up for that leader. So there we go. Let's take a look at national focus then. So we've got this one. So now we can work towards aligning Romania and aligning Hungary. Now, these are very useful things to have. Absolutely. Especially so we can integrate war economies. Now, we could also ask for the German war economy. And if you take a look at the bonuses we get there, they absolutely look very juicy. The only problem here is it's either German war economy or it's integrate war economies. And if we integrate the war economies, what basically happens is there is a benefit to Germany as well as Romania, as well as Hungary. And if we're all operating as one, you may as well give bonuses to three countries as opposed to just one. But again, absent of something going wrong here, 
definitely get the Joe War Economy, but we will try and get these. For now, I'm going to get the Army Innovations. This is relatively important if we take a look at this. Uh, 10 Army Experience. It also unlocks um, the use of a couple of leaders, not least Ermin, uh, Rommel, when it comes to an expert on panzers it's it's one of those advanced military advisor slots that we're yet to fill with or we filled one of them i think there are two left but most important perhaps of all it gives us two 50 percent cost reductions for land doctrines so that is really important so we definitely want to make use of those so let's get your army uh, innovations on the boil okay unpause August, let's see if we can't get this towards the end of September by end of episode. Take a quick look at this, pause. I'm just having a look because things have gone a little crazy here in Spain. Now, we do not want this Panzer Division, this is one of ours here with Rommel, <laughs> to get caught. Now again, whether this has happened with yours or not, the fact is... I don't like this. You can see here there's almost a disconnect. So with this Panzer Division selected, I'm actually going to right click on this spot here. Let go. Okay, I do not want Rommel continuing to engage. Actually, this war is going has gone on for a bit longer and in a kind of a crazy, unusual way versus normal so what i'm going to do now with rommel i'm going to select him and again if if your game is looking something like this follow along if your front is a little more cohesive without this craziness just watch what i'm going to do with rommel with rommel selected and all of his divisions by extension become selected i'm going to select the bin i'm going to not right click because that will delete all the orders i'm going to left click so i can click which specific order I want to delete. Left click. I do not want Rommel having a panzer dealing with this little area of Spain by itself. So I'm going to left click on this front line and that gets rid of that order that that tank had, which was to attack over here. Now the problem is if I now select Rommel again, you can see this tank now has an exclamation mark next to it basically saying uh, that uh, has no orders, right? Because we've just deleted them. So the easiest way to fix that is to just select Rommel again from scratch, press Z, and once again have a new front line. Now you can see they've actually... <laughs> the Spanish have actually... They're starting to spread out a little bit, which is interesting. So I'm going to have... We've now got two front lines... I'm just going to click on this dotted bit over here. And again, the reason we've got two front lines is because the Spanish have, or, or the, the Republican Spanish, I think, have actually been able to break through to the end here and cut or divide nationalist Spain in half. So with this new front line here for Roma, in fact, you know what? The easiest way, I am going to delete them all so that we're not completely split apart. So let's right click on Rommel. Okay. With Rommel selected once again afresh, press Z and click here to create a new front line just on the northern area. And again, only if your game looks like mine. What Rommel will then do, if he does happen to have a tank down here, which he does, once that engagement's finished, he's going to find some way of trying to bring it round. Now, we've got to be careful here. We could actually find our Panzer Division getting cut off. Look at this. We've got a very narrow corridor of escape. So what I'm going to do is actually manually click before I even unpause to stop the engage and holding shift I'm going to right click right click plan the escape route there we go once that division has done those orders that I've given it it will then revert back to doing the orders that Rommel gives it what's Rommel going to do well we've just told him to do a front line I'm now going to select the general and give him an order so front line done that's the z now over to the x key and uh, we'll go ahead and right click drag here there we go so that's the new order of battle i might as well tell him to go even though some of the divisions are not ready yet because others will be let's unpause now hopefully 
you followed along why I did what I did there. And why the mechanics of the game would then unfold the way that they should. Okay, military police unlocked. Okay, let's press escape. Let's hope Rommel's able to save this uh, Panzer Division. And again, if that Panzer Division gets encircled, if we're not able to rescue it, we will lose it. So, I hopefully it can get out of there. I will say, if you happen to have lost a Panzer Division already while we've been doing other stuff in Spain, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, okay? If it's all possible, see if you can send another division over using the same method that we did earlier on. Research slot, let's get this underway. Industry, how far ahead are these? A year, okay, a year plus is too far ahead. Engineering is all being looked at, air, okay. Navy is two years ahead. Artillery, these are over a year ahead. Panzer, over a year ahead. Support companies, over a year ahead. Infantry, these are not over a year ahead. Look, 0 0.33. So if ever there is a toss-up between where well, I could do this row here or this row here, and in this case, both of them are sort of the same, 38, do the bottom row first. Why? Because the bottom row, well, out of these two, actually improves the equipment and or improves the weapons that are being used. The top row improves how effective the troops are. In other words, if we research this improved infantry equipment level one, our factories will literally produce better equipment from the factory. If we research this here, it doesn't actually change what our factories produce, it's just a bonus. So we may as well start producing newer stuff first and then get the bonus second. Rather than get the bonus first and continue to produce older equipment. Because once we, re once we produce improved infantry equipment, it's not like it's a magic thing and suddenly all of the infantry has new equipment. Our factories first have to produce that new equipment and it takes time to filter down and, and quite a long time. And most of the infantry will still be using the older equipment for years to come. So let's... Uh, Let's go ahead and get that one on the go. Okay. We're just going to speed through to get towards the end of September. We're going to ignore that one. Actually, let's go ahead. Okay, lots of things happening once again. So pause with space. Okay, with the rubber, let's deselect. Let's come over to Germany and this division that's just passed out of training. We will give to somebody... I'm going to go ahead and let's go to Bock. He's currently got 10 divisions. Let's see if we can uh, pick him up a little bit more. Come over to research. And at some point, uh, let's go for this one here now, because we've already got the infantry equipment being researched. Okay. At some point now, we're going to have to research some stuff that's somewhat inefficient. And again, this is a result of playing on easy just because of the research speed. So... Don't think it's always you're always going to be ahead of time on on stuff because you're not. Uh, okay, let's unpause. Let's take a look on the F2 menu. Okay, let's just pause there. All right, so our flotilla here, our surface ship with the three destroyers that we'd assigned it, they're now all here. So we will set these guys on patrol. Just so I don't forget, once the war rolls around, I do not want these guys engaging at medium risk. I want these guys to engage at low risk, because there's only three destroyers. So if they're out and about and they see a solitary enemy submarine, they're going to go for it, all right? Because that's low risk. If they see a massive Royal Navy flotilla with battleships and all, they're going to run away, but they are going to get on the blower to the other two flotillas that are waiting at dock and say, hey, we've got a situation. Uh, so for that very reason, low risk. And then once things kick off, if I forget to address this specific setting, it shouldn't matter. Come over now. Let's press escape so we don't accidentally end up diverting flotillas between admirals. We'll select on the sub guy. His training's uh, well underway there. Okay. 
Research slot. Let's have a look here. And again, we're going to have to start everything now that's basically efficient to research has been undertaken. Uh, so we're going to have to go with something that's less efficient here. So I'm going to go with my advanced machine tools. And you can see it's going to take a full year, 365 days. It is one and a bit years ahead of time, but once we get that, it's still going to be slightly ahead of time once it's available to us. So let's just get that on the go. Okay, let's unpause. And we're going to try and get everybody's game towards the end of September. So if we can get to that point, that would be really good. Looks like we've got a Navy ship available. Okay, we've got yet a new submarine. So we're available once again to create yet another flotilla. So with that submarine selected, that isolated one, right click on the sub admiral, save again, automatic reinforcements, yes, automatic split off, yes, come over to the task force comp, press control and shift, uh, sorry, control and click to get six, seven, eight, nine, ten, okay, and on pause. Now you may say, well, hang on a minute. Why is this one training only got nine? It's supposed to have 10. Your game, it probably will have 10. The answer is because one of them's gotten damaged. I think we've been over that before, but just to refresh everyone's mind, if we unpause, look at the repairing there taking place. And as soon as that repairing has completed, you guessed it, there are now the full 10 subs back where they should be. Okay. As we're getting very close to the end of September, modify government. Again, it's the theorist here that I'm going for, Heinz Guderian. And again, that's going to cost us 200 uh, political power to get him there. But you can see it's going to reduce the cost by 15% of the mobile doctrines, right? Now, again, that are these here. So instead of if we knock 15% off, these are going to cost 85 instead of the full 100. Definitely worth having when you consider that applies for every single one all the way down to the end. Uh, in addition to that, again, the, the increase uh, bonuses for armor. Military high command. This is where we're waiting to be able to unlock Rommel. Remember, that was what's currently being undertaken on the national focus tree under those army innovations you see that's almost halfway once that's complete there we will also be able to select rommel and again look at those bonuses armor attack and defense an additional 15 percent so again all of these are good things and hopefully now you can see why it's so important that we get embroiled in that action in spain for those reasons looks like our panzers are actually making some uh, headway here uh, that's actually looking a bit better than it was last time we checked okay back to the air page before we unpause let's have a little look looks like the fighters are almost silver so let's unpause and as soon as it, we got that bar there we go pause we're going to select the the squadron there that's training we're going to cancel the training as we're going to shove this Wing off. Tell you what, we'll position this one up here in northern Germany. Maybe this airbase here that's capable of holding a thousand aircraft. We'll deselect that. We'll see. Is there any new wing that we can train closer? In fact, let's just get both of them so we save ourselves a little bit of time there. Interwar fighter as well as close air support. Okay. See those are joining onto the bottom of the menu here. So we'll make sure we select only those two. We don't want to select all of them. And we'll set these two pilot exercises. It says deploying. It will take a day or so to deploy from get them out the warehouse and onto the airfield, basically. Once that's done, those two will start training straight away. 